use both the linearization and differentials to approximate this root. Two different methods to get this approximation. All right, let's start with the, uh, the linearization side. It's a review from last time. When we did linearizations last time, we were given a function. We were given some x value to play with. Here, we're just given the square root of 24.8 that we know we have to approximate. So we have to create our own function. As a function, so I'll use f of x here for my function, it would make sense to create a function around the operation that's involved up here, which is a square root. So let's keep things simple here. Let's say that our function equals the square root of x. Now, as I said, with linearization, we were used to being given a function and an x value. So I need an x value. Got to create my own. Now, if I was just using some logic here to take the square root of 24.8, I'd probably take the square root of 25, right? to get a reasonable guess, because 25 is the closest perfect square to 24.8. So let's let x equal 25. So as we did last time, given a function, given an x value, we started by finding a point. How we found that point, we took our x value and we plugged it in the function, right? So our point is gonna be that x value and the result we get back when we plug into the function. So when I plug into the function, it's the square root of 25, I get five back, that's my y coordinate. After that, we found a slope. To find the slope, we took the derivative. So f prime of x is gonna equal Understanding for the original function up here, this is x to the 1 half. We'd bring down the 1 half. We'd have x to a new power of negative 1 half because we subtract 1 away from the old power. That is our derivative, but if we simplify that, we know we're going to have this fraction. We know brought to us by this first fraction, there's going to be a denominator of 2. And brought to us by this negative exponent here, we can bump that downstairs to make that a positive exponent now with that x to the 1 half. As far as what remains on top, all that's left is a 1. So we find the derivative to give us a formula for slope. Now we've got this formula to figure out m. We're going to take our x value of 25, we're going to plug in. When we plug in, we've got 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half, same thing as the square root of x, so square root of 25. m is going to equal 1 over 2 times 5, so 1 tenth. We got a point, we got a slope. That means we can find an equation for the tangent line. So that was the next step we followed. So equation in point slope form is y minus the y value we found, which was 5, equals the slope that we found, which was 1 tenth, right, times x minus the x value we started with, which is 25. I discussed last time how this is kind of an optional step when you write out your equation because to get your linearization, which is what we're looking for, all you have to do is take the equation up here and solve for y. So if you can do that in one step without writing the equation, do that. Solving for y, we replace y with our fancy notation L of x to make this all official like, our linearization function. And if we solve for y, we'd have 1 tenth times the quantity x minus 25. We'd be adding this 5 over, so plus 5 at the end. When we were asked to establish the linearization function, that was our endpoint.
but now we're asked to use this function to approximate the square root of 24.8. So at this point, we draw a little conclusion. Using this function, knowing we're plugging in 24.8 to start, we'll plug in 24.8 to this function. When we do that, we've got 1 tenth times 24.8 minus 25, all of that plus 5. What that gives us back right here, that should be a reasonable approximation for the square root of 24.8. So if you calculate that out, and I calculated this out, you check me on this, but came up with 4.98. And that seems to make sense, right? Because we know the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 24.8 is going to be a little less than 5. All right, so now, using differentials, we'll approximate this square root of 24.8 again. As we play with differentials now, once again consider what was given to you in the first place. What was given to you in the first place was a function, normally in a y equals form. And much like we did on the linearization side, it would make sense to uh, be consistent with the operation we're working with here. So let's make this a square root again. We'll make it a square root of x. And then again, along the same lines as what we did with the linearization, we know it's the square root of 24.8 we're trying to find. So as an x value that we would also need, it would make sense to pick the perfect square closest to 24.8. That'd be 25. Now the other piece of information you need to have with these differentials in this approach is you need a dx. So how we find the dx what we're going to do is we're going to take the original value that's underneath this root of 24.8 and we're going to subtract this new x value that we've established at 25. All right? Differentials, we're looking at differences here. So if we look at the difference between these two, that's going to be negative 0.2, right? So as we saw before when we did the differentials approach, once we had all this given information, really it wasn't that complicated a process because you took this function here, you took the derivative of it. So since we're using differentials, we want to use dy dx. And since we've already done this on the linearization side, we, we know what the simplified form is going to be here, right? What was that simplified form again? It was right here. Same derivative, so 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So we've already discussed how to get there, to get to that simplified form. Now, since we're using differentials, let's solve for dy, multiply both sides by dx. So dx swings over here. Now, as we've done before, evaluate dy. Evaluate dy for the given values of x and dx. So the values of x and dx we came up with. We 1 over 2 times x is 25, so square root of 25. dx we found to be negative 0 0.2. Let's calculate that out. 1 tenth of negative 0 0.2. should get negative 0 0.02, right? Now keep in mind the goal here, we're trying to approximate the square root of 24.8. We're trying to do this using differentials. We've evaluated what dy is and we got this negative 0 0.02. Now, negative 0 0.02 obviously is not the answer. 
But to get to the answer, to summarize up here, we got to use a little common sense. We know if we took the square root of 24.8 cold, it'd be close to square root of 25, so it'd be close to 5. So we're going to take 5, and we're going to tack on this little difference, this little differential. We're going to add on negative 0 0.02. And if we do that, that's what we get. We get 4.98, which seems like a reasonable approximation, right? In fact, it's the same thing as what we got over here for the linearization. How about that?